Yeah. Okay. Um, Beck, um, I know that when Brenda put the <coughs> season together, she, I think, very self-consciously saw Jeddah at one end and Here I Am at the other. Um, both films about Aboriginal women. I'm wondering if you could just say something about, I mean, do you see the need for a cinema that's specific to the experiences of Aboriginal women? Yes. <laughs> I don't think I'm the sort of person that can sort of talk for five minutes straight, um, but I'll give it a red hot shot. <laughs> um, look, you think, yes, I do, actually. Um, I mean, I coming into Here I Am, I, I set out to make a film about women, right? I, I, I absolutely knew that I wanted to tell the story about this young woman who, the story begins on the day of her release from prison and ends with her first parole meeting. And it is, a, a, you know, she lives in a, she, she has no family to lean on um, and she ends up in this women's shelter down in Port Adelaide. And um, really she's driven by this goal to reconnect with her daughter, who her mother has custody of. So anyway, there's lots of things going on in the story. But I really, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to make a film about women now. I, I'd actually just come off of working on a series called First Australians for a number of years, dealing with the past, and, and was really profoundly affected by that experience. Um, really angry, um, really moved, really, um, I lot had a big fire in my belly. Um, and so I wanted to sort of harness that in a way that represented who I am. Um, and what I think is lacking in this country in cinema, which is good, strong roles for Aboriginal women to play on screen. And that's my thing, that's what I want to do. That's my aim in my career, I guess, is to continue to create those sort of opportunities for women to play themselves. Um, I mean, I, I remember seeing Jetta as a young girl on telly, um, and I actually know Rosalie quite well from, we both live in Alice Springs. And my partner Warwick did a doco with her calling um, Rosalie's Journey quite a number of years ago now, but it was a fantastic opportunity to hear her speaking about that experience. And I, I, I don't know, but I imagine that it's sort of similar to what you're saying, um, Tommy, um, about, about how she was, how, you know, how that whole situation came about for her to be in the film wasn't, um, was definitely something that has sort of changed her life in good ways and bad. Um, and she should actually really be known for the uh, marvellous work that she does as a translator in the courts and for fighting for justice across the country as well. So it's such a shame that she's not here. Um, but, sorry, am I banging on? No. <laughs> you got another 10 minutes. <laughs> it's woman time. <laughs> I'll, I'll save you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Look out where you are. Um, uh, but I guess not. The, the reason I picked, it's not just simply because the two mm. films were about Aboriginal women, mm. it was looking at the fact that Jeddah was directed by a white man and Here I Am is directed by a black woman. And so it is very much that kind of, you know, a, a, I guess a, maybe it's self-conscious, maybe it's a simplified way of reading it. Mm. But I don't just see Rose, for me also as an Aboriginal woman, I don't just see Rosalie as that that character, mm. I see, and nor do I just see Tommy as that character in Chan of Jimmy Blacksmith. I see the, the complexities of these people, and, and that's when I say she's a heroine of mine, it's because of all the things she's yep. done. And, and it's, it is looking at how we are compartmentalised, and people want to see us one way and one way only. We're not allowed to exist outside of those things and be all of those complex yep. things. So. She got me to Alice Spring once, and I got all my family to dance for a crobbery. And she sat there like Auntie here. And uh, we're like we're dancing for the queens. And she's like the queen for us, you know. Here comes Rosalie. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> and she's so beautiful, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's nice to have women leadership, Marka. For, for us, it's like all these things we learn from you, we take back to the community and we try and, 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 and teach the young women. When we teach the young women, we don't have to have welfare, we don't have to have, you know, we get all the kids to school, everybody's happening. Mm. So if you focus everything on what they're doing, you know, the trends, the whole energy and communities, like most of you, some of you have been in Aboriginal communities, right? We try and lift the dust, and these two got a big job to do in, 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 in that field, encouraging women to be vocal, yeah? Yes. And, and, and that's what 
what they are about. And, and it's nice to sit here in between these two. Yeah. <laughs> Which one's going to punch me? <laughs> yeah, keep, Mama, go, keep going. You. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, mm. uh, are, there, are there other films that you take as, as kind of inspirations? Oh, absolutely. I think um, the, a film that I saw when I was quite young really was Tracy Moffat's Night Cries. And um, mm. yeah, it was just, I, I had never seen anything like it before. Mm. And it really just, I felt like lights had gone off and bells mm. were ringing, you know. It really, um, it really made me go, oh my Lord, this, this is possible. People, mm. you know, we can actually do this. And I've sort of come from a fortunate place because I was, have grown up around Karma, which is the Central Australian Aboriginal Media Association. So my father was the general manager there for 10 years. Um, and so I grew up around uh, Aboriginal media. I started my training at Impaja when I was very young, actually, only 16. Um, and so I sort of, I, had, I, had, I knew about the stuff happening out in the bush, like the beautiful Nanampa series with old men carving boomerangs and sitting under the tree and speaking in language. But I'd never seen really anything, for want of a better term, urban and contemporary. And because that's who I am, I just, when I saw Night Cries, for example, it, I just really thought, okay, there's a whole scope, there's lots of stuff that can be done, and it just really, um, yeah, it ignited that in me, that desire to, to do this. But I also do a lot of documentaries, so I, my drama work, and I've only done three dramas, so it's not a huge body of work, but they, for some reason, they all sort of focus on girls and women. Actually, it's grown as I've grown, as mm. I've gotten older, from a young girl in my first short film called Flat, who you know, records a day in a life on a video camera, a really simple little story, to a woman um, in Cuba PD called Plains Empty, who's isolated out in the bush and her man's away. Mm. And, and then to this, so I guess it sort of tracks my, I've never really realised this until now, tracks my own. <laughs> Um, experience as well in a lot of ways.